How do you surrender your thoughts, your ways, your plans, your actions, your, to God's thoughts, God's plans, God's ideas? You surrender by surrendering to the Word of God, number one. Man, if the Word says it, do it. Do what God said. Amen? God says, this is how my Word, it, it does not return to me void, empty, lacking of power. It accomplishes, the Word accomplishes what God pleases. Praise the Lord, friends. We've been sharing on surrender, and we talked about how, how we do that. Number one, we make a decision to follow Jesus. But number two, we submit ourselves to God's thoughts, God's ways, and God's plan because God's plan is better than our plan any day of the week. Open your heart and receive the word. And so in May of 1998, we graduated from Bible school. Sunday morning, we went to church. Sunday afternoon, we, we loaded our house up on a truck. I paid the youth group to help me. Sunday night, we went to church and we graduated from Bible school. And Monday morning, we got in that truck and drove from there and we arrived in Kit Carson, Colorado just before noon on Wednesday. And when I drove over the overpass into Kit Carson from the east, where 40 and 287 meet, there's a triangle of ground between the old highway, the new highway, and the railroad tracks, and I looked at it and I told Barbara, this is the best place in this town to build a church. And so then we went over to Jerry and Sharon Mahan's house. Sharon was home. They were one of the couples at the Bible study. And, wow, and Sharon called Jim and Patty Mitchick. So Aaron and Rachel Skaggs, Rachel is Jim and Patty's daughter. So Jim and Patty drove in from the country and then we were going to the wagon wheel restaurant. They had the Wagon Wheel Hotel and Restaurant to eat lunch. And so while we were waiting for Jim and Patty to come, Barbara told Sharon, he said, Lawson said he knows the best place in this town to build a church. And Sharon did not say a word. And then we went and we we're sitting down eating and Sharon looked at Jim and Patty and said, Lawson said he knows the best place in this town to build a church. And Jim looked at me and said, where is it? I said, it's that triangle of ground between the old highway the new highway, and the railroad tracks. And Jim said, isn't that interesting? We bought that. It was two or three years before, and we bought it to have, and I had no idea. I did not know this, but God knew it, to have some type of missions outreach. And he said, now, we know that we're to build a church, but we don't know what the name should be called. And I said, well, what about Church of the Redeemed? And Jim said, well, isn't that in Isaiah 35? And I said, yeah, it's Isaiah 35, 10. The ransomed of the Lord will return and come to Zion with singing and an everlasting joy will be on their heads. And Jim said, do you remember last summer when you came and taught at the Bible study and taught on Isaiah 35? And I remembered it perfectly. It was in July. I was working on the farm. I probably got up at 4 o'clock and went to work and it was about 2 or 2.30. I went to the house to take a power nap and I laid down for about 15 minutes and when I woke up, the Holy Spirit said, teach tonight on Isaiah 35. So I took about 15, I might not have even read Isaiah 35 before that. But listen, I took about 15 or 20 minutes, read through Isaiah 35 and wrote some basic notes on it and went back to work. And then that evening I came and showered up and drove to Kit Carson an hour away and we had the Bible study and I shared on Isaiah 35 and they were so excited. I thought, this is amazing. I know nothing about Isaiah 35. Why are they so excited about this teaching? And Jim told me, he said, you remember when you shared? I said, yes. He said, the week before you came to the Bible study, we had a man come through at the Bible study, and he was a prophet of God. And he told us that Isaiah 35 was the vision for the house. He said, we're going to build a church, and we're going to name it Church of the Redeemed. And did you know what? In 15 months, we had a beautiful 
5,400 square foot, all brick, Marvin windows, central heat and central air building built. We built it for $154,000. It was an absolute miracle. It was the complete grace. We built it for half what anybody could have touched it. It was a miracle. God helped us. And God, and you know what? We pastored Kit Carson for 13 years, and while we were there, we gave at least $50,000 a year away to missions and other ministries. It was a complete miracle, and we never lacked. Listen, since I started pastoring, I have given at least 10 cents out of every dollar that comes into missions and other ministries, and I have never lacked. We came to Colorado Springs in the year 2001 to start this church because God spoke to us. We had almost no money and we had almost no people. And we this building today, did you know if we built just this building new today, it would cost over $60 million. Now, it didn't cost us that. Because guess what? We got a relationship with God. We've got the Holy Ghost. It's completely paid for. Do you know what I don't lack? We got plenty of money. You know what? We get, we're given to the nations of the world. Hallelujah. We're helping churches all over the United States of America. We're helping churches all over the world. We're helping missions all over the world. And did you know what? If you'll give to God first, you will never lack. I used to talk to pastors and encourage them to tithe, to give at least 10%. Oh, we can't do that. You can't afford not to. Listen, some of you think you can't afford to tithe. You can't afford not to tithe. I've seen this with believers. I just tell you, you can't afford not to. Hallelujah. I've given, listen, Barbara and I, it's a miracle. Our life is a complete miracle. There's no way that you can describe it. Except, did you know what? I put today three times in the offering what my monthly salary was when we pastored in Kit Carson. And I give every week more than my monthly salary was. It's a complete miracle, and it's way beyond 10%. Hallelujah, but you can't outgive God. And the only way that you can explain the blessing on my life is God got involved in our life. Do you know what? God's plan is better than your plan any day of the week. You know, while I was in Kit Carson, I had a farmer. He was buying six sections. That's six square miles of property. He wanted to sell me one. He was getting a great deal on it in the middle of that deal, and I wanted to buy it. It was about 14 miles from town. I went and I drove around this section, a square mile, four miles around it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I drove around it with my little 300 stick shift Ford, four on the floor, six cylinder, and I wanted to buy it so bad and I knew it would make money. And you know what? God told me no. And I drove back and I parked at the back of that church. I was literally shaken under the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, if God says no, he means no. And if I would have bought that property, I might not be here pastoring. Did you know what? You have to obey God. You don't know what the backside of this thing looks like. When I'm talking about surrendering your thoughts, your ways, your plans, I was talking to Bobby this morning. They have been in Mexico 47 years. Bobby went to Mexico 47 years ago to hold crusades. But he didn't, never wanted to hold a crusade without being connected with a local church because he wanted a place when people got saved to get people connected to that local church. And he found out when he was talking to people that they, they, a lot of these pastors were pastoring two or three churches. So there was a shortage of pastors. There was a shortage of ministers. So 46 years ago, he started a Bible school. And then a year later, he started their church. Hallelujah. Word of Life Church, hallelujah. In Victoria, Mexico. 
And Bobby has been pastor in this church for 45 years, and they have sent people all over Mexico. They have people that have been raised up and that are taking the gospel all over Mexico. They've got at least 15 churches in their own town that came out of their church. They've got churches and ministries that they support all over the world. Hallelujah, you go where God got. You never know what that plan's gonna look like, but as you follow God, you need to surrender your ways. You need to surrender your plans and your thoughts to God's plan. In 2001, did you know in 2000, God had been stirring in Barbara and I's heart for two years about making a change. And in about July of 2000, we sat down one day and we talked about how we could pastor the church in Kit Carson and just get another pastor, not actually stop pastor and get another pastor and travel and teach the gospel from Kit Carson. And guess what? We thought it was a good plan. That night we went to bed and Barbara didn't sleep all night and I didn't sleep all night. Now it's not unusual for me not to sleep. But it's very unusual for Barbara not to sleep. And guess what? That was our plan, but it wasn't God's plan. And I'm telling you, God's plan is better than your plan any day of the week. And then in January 4th, 2001, I was sitting at my office in Kit Carson and God dropped a word in my spirit and said, go to Colorado Springs and start a church, Karis Christian Center. And January 7th, I called Andrew Womack in Sunday afternoon, 2001, and Andrew Womack said, you better get with it. Hallelujah. Did you know what? Greg Trapp, who was here in the first service with his wife, Kim, had told me within that last year, if you'll come within 60 miles of this town and build a church, I'll come to it. And he's still here. Mike and Mary Peterson are sitting back here. Did you know what? Mike and Mary helped us start this church, and they had went to Andrew Womack and said, Andrew, you need to start a church that teaches what you... He said, I am not a pastor, and I'm not starting a church they said, well, you need to get someone that you know. And I had talked to Andrew Womack, so, and I might have the order messed up, but Andrew told him, my friend Lawson's going to come start a church, and you need to come. Do you know, I had at least 20 or 30 friends here that I had led to the Lord in Colorado Springs, and I thought we were starting a Bible study. I thought some of them would come. And did you know what? Almost nobody came. And the first week, we had about a whole $15 or something in the offering when I had a Bible study, but the next week Mike and Mary came and they put $1,000 in the offering. And I thought, my God, somebody believed in me. Somebody believed in this. And now I have to be accountable to God. And they have given me $1,000 to start a church in Colorado Springs and I've got to do this. Friends, I've been sharing on surrender. If you only knew how good it would be, you would surrender your life to Jesus. And we have these teachings available, and they're downloadable audio, they're downloadable video, and our partners have made them free of charge to you. So all you have to do is go to the website at charischristiancenter.com, and you can find those. Or if you have a challenge, just give us a call today. Blessings. When Barbara and I are in a tight spot, We don't call 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 people and say, would you pray for us? We don't do that. Do you know what we call? We call one or two good friends. People of faith are people who know God, and we get them to agree with us and believe God with us. It's not because you pray many prayers. It's because you pray in faith. But you know what? We had almost no people and no money, but we gave to God and believed God, and God has helped us. Amen? And He keeps helping us. And you know what? We keep going. We're doing today more than we've ever done before. Do you know God laid it on my heart for a year to go on Daystar more than once a week? And I was thinking about three or four days a week, and I I didn't want to do it. You know why I, Lawson Purdue, didn't want to do it? Because it costs lots of money. And Lawson does not like to spend money. But I made, God just really laid it on my heart in November. Now is the time. Get with it. And you know what? Since we made that decision, 
Increase has been coming. Blessing has been coming. Supernatural things are happening. It is amazing what God, because it is not my plan. It is not my idea. It is not my carnal nature, carnal thinking, natural thinking. It is the plans and the purposes of God. And when you follow God's plan, it's so much better. God's plan is better than your plan any day of the week. So Isaiah 55, did I ever read this? He says this, seek the Lord in verse 6. While he may be found, call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to God, for he will abundantly pardon. Verse 8 says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and does not return there, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth in buds so that may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper the thing whereunto I send it. How do you surrender your thoughts, your ways, your plans, your actions your, to God's thoughts, God's plans, God's ideas? You surrender by surrendering to the Word of God, number one. Man, if the Word says it, do it. Do what God said. Amen? God says, this is how my word, it it does not return to me void, empty, lacking of power. It accomplishes, the word accomplishes what God pleases. And it prospers the thing whereunto I send it. Again, if you surrender, what happens? There's good things that happen. He says in verse 12, for you will go out with joy. And be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you into singing. The trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn will come up the fir tree. And instead of the briar will come up the myrtle tree. And it will be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that will not be cut off. Listen, God's plan for you is better than your plan for you any day of the week. James 4, verse 13 to verse 16 says, you shouldn't say, I'm going to go and I'm going to work in this community and I'm going to make money and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. What you should say is, if the Lord wills, I'll go. It's not wrong to make plans, but you got to submit your plan to God's plan. Hallelujah. You should just say, if, you know what? We need to surrender to the plan, to the purpose of God. Number one, we do it by the word. Number two, by the spirit. In Matthew 26, verse 39, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He had been praying. He was looking at the cross, and he said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. He didn't want to do it. His flesh. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. If Jesus, the Son of God, needed to pray, not my will, but your will be done, guess what? You and I might need to pray once in a while, not my will, but your will be done. We need to surrender our thoughts and our plans to God's thoughts and God's plan. Jesus went on to say in verse 41, he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We need to surrender to God's plan. We need to surrender to his God's thoughts and God's ways. We need to surrender by surrendering to the word of God and to the spirit of God. Amen? My final point is this, and I'll go quickly. When we rest in the cross, we release the treasure of Christ in us. Paul makes this statement in Galatians 2, verse 20. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. I've been crucified. I identified with the cross, yet it's not me living. You see, when you identify with the cross, when you identify with Christ in his death, then you identify with his resurrection. I love this verse in Romans 4, verse 25. 
It says he was delivered for our offenses, but he was raised again for our justification. When we rest in the cross, we release the power of the life of God. Let me give you one more scripture. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and let's read verse 4 through verse 7. He says, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who believe not, lest the light of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has shined in our heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now listen to my conclusion. If you only knew how good it would be, you would absolutely surrender your life to the complete lordship, to the complete dominion, to the complete authority of Jesus Christ. God bless you. I love you. Friends, I've been sharing on how I have surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ and how I've made specific decisions that have really led to the blessing of the Lord in my life and good things happen. And you know what? I don't think you can really experience the life of God unless you first die to yourself, unless you first surrender. But I wanted Aaron to share a little bit today on how he's surrendered to the plan of God, the purpose of God, the call of God on his life and how that's really worked out to ultimate blessing in his life. So Aaron, just go ahead. Yeah, one of my favorite scriptures growing up is uh, from Psalm 20. It says, may he grant you according to, to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. And um, I believe that God wants to grant you according to your heart's desire, fulfill all your purpose. But at the same time, you need to have an openness to what God is doing in you and uh, how he wants to lead you. You know, some people just really get stuck on one track and think if it doesn't work out this way, then I, you know, I, I don't have any purpose. But you have to have an openness. Sometimes God will lead you in one direction and then, um, you know, take you in another direction. So you have to have an openness to God, a flexibility. Um, you know, growing up, I, I love, I love church. I always, I've always loved um, church. Growing up as a pastor's kid, and I, I knew in my heart that someday I'd be involved helping church in a big way. But I also really loved music. I actually play. You know, flute. I'm a. I have a, a lot of training in classical music, and uh, I actually, you know, invested a lot of time, energy, finances into pursuing music. You know, growing up, my dad um, here would actually drive me to flute lessons. You know, I grew up in a town of just 300 people, so there wasn't a whole lot of, um, you know, opportunity there. So my dad would drive me once a month for my flute lessons, three hours in one direction, uh, so I could get these lessons. We did that from fourth through eighth grade. Um, then we moved here to Colorado Springs when I was in ninth grade, and I, I was really involved with a lot of classical music things. And I went to college, got you know the opportunity to study with some of the, the best um, flute professors in the country, and study with top musicians from all around the world. And uh, God just gave me a lot of opportunity, a lot of scholarships. So I eventually got a doctorate in music, and uh, you know if you added up all of the you know, years of study and how much it would have costed. I, I've received about five hundred thousand dollars worth of education in classical music. And right um, as I finished my <laughs> um, coursework, um, you know, the church was growing, and you needed someone to come help. You needed an associate pastor, and you um, just asked me, you know, would you consider doing this? I knew in my heart at some point I would do it, but I thought it'd be later down the road. I thought I'd be a professor in music or playing a symphony for a while. But I, I spent about three months praying about it. And I felt that God told me, you know, he let me do what I wanted, but I felt God nudging me in the direction of stepping into ministry at that point. So I've been pastoring now, working here um, alongside my dad for eight years, and um, I can see how God used all my training in the area and has, has used it to help me Amen. be a better um, pastor, a better teacher of the Bible. Um, and, and, you know, I have a very unique background. There aren't that many full-time pastors, ministers today that have a doctorate in music or 
Um, yeah, and some people think, well, why did he spend all this time? It was a waste. No, not a minute of it was wasted. Yeah. Here's what Aaron learned in classical music. He learned attention to detail. Mm -hmm. And he has brought that into the church. And it and when you listen to him teach, his teaching is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I've heard thousands and thousands of hours of teaching, and yet I'll hear him teach, and I'll hear things that I've never heard in my life. And I'm like, that is amazing revelation. But it taught him a real attention to detail that has led to his prosperity and success as a minister of the gospel. And I don't think any of this was by chance. Go ahead. Yeah, so God, um, yeah, just keep trusting him. And I believe that he will grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. But um, you don't really know what your entire purpose is or what each step of the way is. So Amen. keep trusting God and, and he'll He'll direct you, he'll guide you, but you have to have a willingness to, to listen and to, to be flexible as well. Yeah. And uh, when you surrender to God's will and just step out by faith, you know, it's actually uncomfortable for me because I had so much training in one area um, I was much more comfortable, you know, standing up in front of people with the flute at first than standing up with the Bible and preaching. But as I kept doing it, I, you know, God helped me and, and he, he was able to fast track things and just translate some of my skills and education and background to just translate it. So it wasn't wasted, but he used it to, to help produce a harvest in an, another area that was unexpected. Amen. So keep trusting God. His ways are so much better than your ways. His plans are so much better than your plans. You know, you might have have plans, have direction. That's a good thing, but God wants to ultimately direct your steps. Amen. And Aaron, it's been blessed. And you know what? God helped you in a lot of ways, trained you things. And I believe you'll be blessed when you allow Jesus to have his way. Blessings. When you fully surrender and give your life to Jesus, he will live in you and through you. Completely surrender to Him in your thoughts, decisions, and actions. If you knew how good it would be, you never would have waited. We'd like to bless you with a digital copy of Surrender, a $15 value free of charge. Download your copy today at CarisChristianCenter.com. Friends, in the last few months, we have heard from over 50 nations in the world. People from all around the world are downloading our curriculum, our syllabus, our downloadable audio and downloadable video teachings, our confession cards, and all of these great teaching materials. And you can go receive it too at charischristiancenter.com. Receive these resources and be blessed. Friend, I invite you to pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and you raised him from the dead and made him Lord on the third day. And right now, I surrender my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at PO Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.